Hello and welcome to this demo. In this demo, we're going to see how to set up an instance of GitLab locally on our laptop. This demo takes you through the whole process of setting up a virtual machine and a local source code repository on it using VirtualBox and GitLab. So we start with the Oracle VirtualBox. In one of the previous demos, we covered how to install and set up the Oracle VirtualBox. We will now proceed with deploying a CentOS-based system to deploy GitLab. If you have a template of a virtual machine already, you could skip the next few minutes of this video. If you don't, then I'll show you how to download an image and set up a VM template. If you go to the osboxes.org website, you can see a list of operating systems images available for use. For this, I'm going to select the CentOS VirtualBox image. You can see that there are multiple options available. I'm going to go with the first one, which is a 64-bit operating system. Click on Download to download the VDI file. Once downloaded, extract it to a folder. Now that we have the file ready, we will create a new virtual machine using this VirtualBox image. Click on New to create a new virtual machine in the Oracle VirtualBox interface. We're going to start with a template, so we're going to create a template first. I will select the operating system version as other Linux 64-bit. Go to the memory size and increase it up to 2 GB. And then in the next screen, select the hard disk. I will select the Using Existing option and browse to the folder that I just downloaded and extracted the VDI file to, which happens to be the file with the extension VDI. There is one thing that we need to take care of before we power up the VMs, and that is networking. So all of the virtual machines that we deployed must have a static IP address. If the IPs keep changing, we will have a hard time working with these machines. By default, the networking configuration on Oracle VirtualBox is set to provide a DHCP IP for all VMs. If we are setting up a bridged network adapter, by default, the VM gets a DHCP IP assigned to it from the wireless router at our home or office. What we really want is a static IP address. Go to the Global Settings section on the VirtualBox interface and add a new adapter for this purpose. And make sure to uncheck the Enable DHCP Server option. Take note of the network IP address and range configured for this network. Once the new network adapter is set up, go to the Settings page of My CentOS Template, and I will now update the CPU to 2. Then I'm going to go to the Network section and I will set the first adapter to use a bridged configuration to route to my wireless router so that I can access the internet. The second adapter will be attached to the host on the adapter that I just created, which is the one without the DHCP setting. This way, I can assign my host a static IP address. Once that is done, power on the CentOS template and wait for it to power on. I'll go through the initial setup for CentOS by accepting the license, and then I will log in for the first time using the password osboxes.org. If you go back to the osboxes.org site and click on Info, you can see the username and password that can be used to access these virtual machines. So the default password is always osboxes.org. I'm all set and I will now shut down the virtual machine so that I can use this as a template for all my future systems. Right click on the CentOS template and create a new clone. I will name it GitLab and I'll make sure to use a linked clone so that it does not consume more resources on my hard disk. And I'll make sure to check the reset MAC address option to ensure my new virtual machine gets a new MAC address. I will now power on the virtual machine and log in using the osboxes.org password. 
Under terminal, check the IP address by running the command ifconfig. I can see that there is no IP address set on the second adapter. I will need to set a static IP address. I could use a network script for this purpose. So I go to the slash etsy slash sysconfig slash network scripts directory. And under that, I have a default script available for the loopback device. We can make a copy of that to create a new script for the new interface, which happens to be ENP0S8. I then modify the contents of this file to add a new static IP address for the interface, and the IP address is 192.168.56.150. I will then update the other values, such as network mask and the network address, and I'll make sure to name the interface correctly. I will now restart the network service. Once done, run the ifconfig command to see the new IP address assigned. I can now use this IP address to log into the system. To get GitLab installed on the system, go to the GitLab website, and here you, you can see the different ways to get started with GitLab on a Linux system. You can either install it directly or use Docker images. I'm going to go with Docker. Feel free to choose what you feel most comfortable with. However, I do not have Docker on my host. For this, look for instructions on installing Docker on CentOS. An easy way to achieve this is to use the Docker installer script available on the Docker website. This automatically installs Docker for us. Once installed, start the Docker service. I can find the instructions on running a GitLab instance using Docker in the GitLab documentation page. Use the given command and modify the host name and port mappings to suit your needs. The host name could either be an FQDN or the IP address of the CentOS virtual machine. In this case, we will use the IP address. Make sure that this IP or FQDN does not change. Once deployed, Wait for it to initialize. It may take a few minutes for this. You can monitor it using the docker logs-f command. Once ready, I will be able to access it using the IP address of my host and the port specified in the port mappings. During the initial login, we are asked to change the default password. Once reset, I can log in using the username root and the new password that I set. And I now have a working local setup of GitLab source code repository on my laptop. Well, that's it for this demo. See you later.